Hi, thanks for joining another video today. I want to take a small detour from the usual EV topics and explain what is and how Tesla's autopilot and full self-driving system works. Tesla states that all new Tesla cars come standard with advanced hardware capable of providing autopilot features today and full self-driving capabilities in the future. Currently, base autopilot is capable of keeping you in your lane and keeping speed with the vehicle in front of you, as well as a few other features. Let's go over how that all works. Before we get into Tesla's autopilot and full self-driving, let's go over the different automation levels. The NHTSA states that there are five levels. Zero is no automation, so the driver performs all the driving tasks. Level one means the car is controlled by the driver, but some driving assist features may be included in the vehicle design. Level two is where the vehicle has combined automated functions, but the driver must remain engaged with driving and monitor the environment. Level three means the driver is a necessity, but is not required to monitor the environment. So the driver must be ready to take control at a moment's notice. Level four is that the vehicle is capable of performing all driving functions under certain conditions, but the driver may have the option to control the vehicle. And finally is level five, full automation. The vehicle performs all driving functions under all conditions. At full level five, the steering wheel on the car can be removed. Tesla's autopilot is currently at a level two. Because of the consistent requirement to have your hands on the wheel, they can't be considered at a level three system yet. Going to some old technologies, cruise control has been around for a long time and hasn't changed too much. You just set your speed and go. You can do fine adjustments or just turn it off completely. This car does not come with autopilot, but it does have regular cruise control. And you just push down on the stock. And then it sets cruise control. And you could adjust the speed limit with this button. In the 90s, traffic-aware cruise control, or TAC, started to emerge. It used sensors on the front of the car to detect the vehicle ahead of you. If the car in front of you slowed down, your car would slow down too. This feature helped out with highway driving because you wouldn't have to keep making adjustments to your cruise control system. Now I'm in the car with the full self-driving package and I'm going to engage traffic-aware cruise control. And I'm going to do it the same way as I did the regular cruise control by pushing down on the stock once. And I could also adjust the speed limit with this button. And the difference with this is that the car is going to slow down or speed up based on the car in front of it. So right here, um, let's see how the car does. can see that it um, slows down. Tesla added a feature to this called Auto Steer that will keep you centered in your lane and avoid other cars. Autopilot combines traffic-aware cruise control and Auto Steer to drive the car and it's fantastic for long drives. Now I'm going to turn on Autopilot and to do that I'm just going to tap on the stock twice and it's engaged. And this is basically going to keep me between the lanes and also keep a distance between me and the other car. And this is great for long trips and when you're in traffic. Tesla cars built before September 2014 do not have any autopilot features. Model S and X cars built from September 2014 to 2016 have what's called autopilot version 1. The original version of autopilot was developed by a company called Mobileye. Autopilot 1 used a single monochrome forward-facing camera, 12 ultrasonic sensors, and a forward-firing radar. Tesla and Mobileye began to add features to the cars over the years. They added the ability to change lanes by using ultrasonic sensors to detect if a car was present in the lane beside it. They also figured out that by aiming the radar down at the ground, they could detect not only the car that's in front of you, but the car that's in front of them. It would also know the speed at which the two cars in front are going. This is an amazing safety feature since the car is able to identify two cars ahead and it can prepare to avoid a collision if it detects hard braking. So Tesla can detect two cars ahead of me even if I can't see them here on the screen. Autopilot version 2 came out in late 2016 and the software was built in-house by Tesla. It featured 8 color cameras around the car, 12 ultrasonic sensors, and a forward-firing radar. The computer was no longer powered by Mobileye, but was now using NVIDIA chips. This upgrade in sensor suite and computing power made Tesla convinced that they could develop a car to completely drive itself. 
Having the extra cameras allowed Tesla to introduce a new feature called Navigate on Autopilot. This feature allowed the car to suggest and eventually perform lane change decisions on a highway. It was able to use mapping data to determine which lane was best to be in for a navigated route. It would also watch the traffic around to find a faster lane if your car was going slower than a set speed. This release was a big jump, but it was far from perfect. At the start, it was almost more annoying than helpful. Anytime it would want to make a lane change, you'd have to confirm that it was safe. I found it funny how some Tesla owners would have a window decal that said student driver. Obviously, the car was a student. Now I'm going to turn on navigate on autopilot. I'm going to do the same thing, which is tap down on it twice. But this time I'm going to enter in a destination. Okay, and navigate on autopilot is on. So now the car is going to uh, change lanes for me to reach my destination, and it will also change lanes if the lane I'm on is going slow. I can also request for the car to change lanes for me. I just have to turn on my turn signal and I'm going to go into the left lane. And the car is changing lanes. So you do have to keep your hands on the steering wheel at all times. And Tesla does check in and asks you to put your hands on the steering wheel to make sure that you're still paying attention. So if I were to let off the steering wheel, um, I'm going to get a sign right now, an alert that says to put my hands on the steering wheel. Let's see how long it's going to take for it to notice that I'm not paying attention. There. Apply light force on the steering wheel. I'm here. <laughs> So I have an upcoming exit, and the car should, uh, there it goes, it's, should change lanes and exit for me. I'm not doing anything, the car is doing it all on its own. There's a neat Easter egg in autopilot where you have to tap down on the stock four times and then the rainbow road appears. There is some music in the beginning, but uh, eventually there's just a rainbow on the road that you're just driving on. Tesla eventually came out with what is frequently called autopilot 2.5. They needed additional processing power to make their full self-driving dreams come true. They doubled processing power and gained redundancy by adding in a second NVIDIA chip onto the board. They also updated the cameras and radar, but it wasn't a major change. Smart Summon was a feature released for cars with hardware 2 and up. It allowed the car to navigate itself through a parking lot and return to its owner. It's a neat feature that people never expect. Things like parking lots and city streets are much more complicated and difficult to drive than being on a highway. Even though you're driving slower, there are many more obstacles and rules that need to be followed. I'm going to summon the car to me, but first I'm going to look at what path it's going to take. And it's going to go around the barrier. All right, so come to me. So it's going to navigate through the parking lot. using its blinker. <laughs> All right, then it should make a turn here using its blinker again. There's my ride. This brings us up to hardware version 3. This is the current version of autopilot hardware, which has been named by Tesla as a full self-driving computer. The chip on this computer was completely designed in-house for heavy neural network use and video processing. This computer is what's driving all of those cars that are in full self-driving beta. Full self-driving is supposed to be a fully autonomous system capable of driving by itself, following traffic rules, driving on city streets, really just able to do it all. I keep watching the videos and it's amazing how fast they're learning. This car originally came with Autopilot 2.5 but was eventually retrofitted with the 3.0 computer. 
Some people have stated concerns about autopilot or the main screen on the car freezing and causing a crash. The good news is the system is built to handle all kinds of bizarre situations. The main screen in any Tesla is not required to be functional for autopilot to continue working. You can actually restart the car while driving on autopilot and it'll continue to drive. I wouldn't recommend doing this as it is a bit unsafe. In the event that the autopilot computer does fail while driving, the system immediately alerts the driver to take back over. The drive-by-wire computer is completely separate too. When Tesla designed Autopilot Hardware 3, they built it with redundancy in mind. On the board, it has redundant power, so if one power source fails, the other can take over. It has duplicate chips as well. The left and right sides of the board are replicas and can take over for each other and error check. The car is always learning. One of Tesla's biggest advantages is the fact that they have such a large fleet. They're able to collect anonymous video clips from all of the cars in the fleet and use that data to train their driverless car system. You can opt out of this, by the way, though they assure that all of the data is anonymized. Earlier in the video, when I mentioned that for early versions of Navigate on Autopilot, you had to confirm for a lane change. I'd bet that a video was sent to Tesla when those lane changes were successful. They're also able to run their software in shadow mode. This allows them to have the car simulate as though it's always driving itself and report back when you as the driver do something different than it would. Tesla has also been known to deploy out multiple autopilot versions to a single car. You could be driving on one version it's running in shadow mode on another. It's sort of wild, but it's kind of ingenious. All autonomous driving systems require driver training and input in order to learn. So this isn't something unique to Tesla. They just have a gigantic fleet to pull data from. Autopilot and full self-driving work on what are called neural networks. They're a complicated form of artificial intelligence that is similar to how the human brain works. It's able to look at objects and recognize what they are. The problem is that they need to look at a lot of objects to really learn something well. This could require them to see thousands or tens of thousands of images before making an accurate prediction every time. During one of the autonomy events, Andre Caparti, the director of artificial intelligence and autopilot at Tesla, described a situation where they could ask the fleet to solve a problem for them. They found that if the car saw another vehicle with the bike on the back of it, it would think that there was a bike driving down the highway at 70 miles per hour sideways. This is technically correct, but also wrong. What they did was take a bunch of pictures of cars with bikes on the back of them. They trained the neural network just enough to give it an idea of what it was, and then they asked the fleet to send back images that look similar. Within days, they were floated with enough images to fully train the neural networks. Other companies are coming out with autonomous driving systems as well. Ford's cruise system, not to be confused with Super Cruise, is aiming to be able to create a fully autonomous vehicle as well. Mobileye has been posting some incredibly promising videos of their systems too. Can't forget Waymo. Their system appears to be evolving every day and is probably the one that everyone compares Tesla to. Speaking of these other companies, a big difference between them and Tesla is that some of them use a combination of LiDAR and vision. Tesla only uses vision for its driverless system. Solid state LiDAR is supposedly around the corner, which would mean that the vehicles wouldn't need the spinning LiDAR sensors on top and the sides of the vehicles anymore. Autopilot includes traffic aware, cruise control, and auto steer. Currently, if you add the full self-driving capability, then you would get things like navigate on autopilot, auto lane change, auto park, summon and traffic light and stop sign control. At red traffic lights, the car will come to a complete stop. When it turns green, you must confirm that the car can proceed forward. Now, I'm not an engineer, but I do follow and enjoy the updates and progress on autonomous vehicles. I know a lot of people ask if it's worth it to buy full self-driving. I don't have a straightforward answer. It is quite pricey, but pricing may go up as technology advances. All cars come with base autopilot now, which is helpful for longer trips. If you enjoy the progress and benefit of using these features, you should go for it. From a public health perspective, an autonomous vehicle future will shift focus from minimizing post-crash injury to collision prevention, and that is what I am personally most passionate about. If you're considering getting full self-driving added to your car, Tesla announced in the quarter four 2020 earnings call that a Tesla full self-driving subscription program will be coming soon. So you may be able to subscribe to full self-driving rather than committing to that current $10,000 price tag for it. 
Thanks for spending time with me today. Make sure to subscribe for more EV content and follow me on social media at Kai's EV and Kai's Tesla. Kai is my dog. And make sure to check out my website at kaizev.com. That's all for now, and happy charging. Yeah.